everybody KG here for Newbie Ham Radio. As you can see, I got some new toys. We'll get to those in a minute. But first part, I wanted to do a follow up on TYT 2017 after two months of ownership. So you may, if you see my other video, and I'll throw a link to it down below. I showed you how to program Six, and how five, to four, set up your TYT. Two, one, so, two, just scrolling through. Three, I must say the trackball four, was a little bit aggravating at first, five, six, but I've gotten used to seven, it. Um, two, you just got to remember it's really sensitive, seven, so you got to just use it nine, accordingly. So it's worked pretty well. Um, everything I've used it on seems to uh, it seems to work well, from local DMR repeaters to access hotspots, whether it be the one in the background or DB4 Mini. Yes, it's had the firmware update, the old school firmware update, is the tape. But back to this, it seems to, it's worked really well. It's nice to have, Eight, especially locally nine, at home, and I'll 11, be able to connect to Brandmaster. Plus, 13, 14, 16, be on my local 16, repeaters, um, two, which you see here on VHF. One, I have UHF local repeaters, but most of the time, it's... VHF local repeaters that I'm on. Two, um, three, so. four, That's five, the setup. Six, seven, I think 16, right now 15, there's about you can put 64 talk groups or channels on each side in one zone. And I think I have one, seven, six, one, 52 in this one. 50, this one, is my, uh, 50, 40, my hot spot. 9, 48, um, so it works 40, really well. 7, and then if 40, you look, six. if I switch zones, that's on my list. Um, I do have some more zones I want to add. I want to add the uh, North Carolina has some Brandmeister repeaters now. I need to add those. Um, but most of this is all PRN system. Oh, and Tennessee. Which a lot of the Eastern Tennessee repeaters, DMR repeaters, have switched to Brandmeister now. Instead of DMR Mark. So that's that. Um, Still the original antenna connector. I have not had any issues with that. Although I know some people have. Um, still using the same one. Um, so that's still good. Um, I have noticed. Let me see if I can get the screen to blink out. You can see scratches on the screen. Evidently it's not Gorilla Glass or anything like that. Um, so I have scratched that up. Although a lot of that's clean enough, but there is scratches, as you can see. Um, so I have seen people said by yeah, cell phone screen protectors. You can cut it to fit to place over that. It'll cut down on that. Well, like I said, overall I'm really happy 40, with it. Five, 40, um, six, it is 40, one of the latest 7, firmware. So hundred thousand contacts. All the latest updates. Yep. 12, 6, 12, so that's that. Six, the one thing I'm still trying to get used to, one, um, nine, night, for one, some reason, if one of my VHF 12, um, repeaters starts keying up, it takes over from what's in UHF. I gotta figure out the setting for that. But I've just gotten used to, I've got back set 
it mutes out my VHF repeater so I can just talk on uh, my hotspot. So, let me show you the new toys that I've got. First off is a I blue stack. Um, this is the blue stack where DB Mega with the Apple version um, blue stack board. Um, hence the blue flashing light. Really easy to set up. The one I ordered actually already came 3.14 firmware for the DB Mega, so I didn't have to update it. Hence why it doesn't have the wire yet. Um, if you want to update the firmware on these, you either have to solder a wire from there to the second pin on the GPIO, or you have to have an Arduino Uno board to take the chipset out and place in the board to update. Um, I have tested it. Um, I'll do a screen grab of the actual app running, but right now I've got it plugged in, the button pushed in to run on the mode where I have a Raspberry Pi um, and this is actually a model 1B plus um, so I'm not even running there two or three and it seems to be running really well um, yeah I mean so it's running in computer mode, serial mode, just using the DB Mega plugged into the Pi Star, um, and I'm able to talk on Brandmeister. That's my setup. Um, I'll throw up a uh, Pi Star demo um, here in a few minutes at the end of this. So this is my Pi Star setup. What you're looking at is actually the web browser access for the actual Pi Star for the software running that controls the actual hotspot. Um, Pi Star is a Raspberry Pi image uh, built off of Jesse, which I'm pretty sure is the latest distro for the Raspberry Pi. But it's basically optimized for for running as a hotspot. Um, it use the Raspberry Pi to control the uh, RF part of the DB Mega to connect to whatever digital radio you would like to run. Um, as you can see it runs D-Star, DMR, Fusion, and P25. Don't have any D-Star yet, don't have any Fusion yet, um, and don't have any P25 ham radio side um, hardware. So just running DMR right now. It's pretty easy to set up. Shows when it's connected. Um, whenever you first run it, it has a configuration screen, which is basically what type of device you're using, your DMR ID, your call sign, uh, so that it knows what is reporting when you go to Brandmeister or DMR Plus or um, DMR Mart. Shows what version firmware you're using on your DB Mega, which, like I said before, mine come 3.14. So it works with the iBlue stack, so I didn't have to update it. Shows what talk groups you're attached to. It's it's really nice setup. Um, and I like having the web browser, where you can just go to it that way instead of having to do SSH or remote access the program in order to change any settings you may have or to monitor. So I have this talk group set up in my radio it you know my frequency for my hotspot and that talk group which is 3137 which is uh, North Carolina statewide it shows who's accessing locally RF means on my side plus any gateway activity so basically it shows anybody that's using that talk group there's several other screens you can use you can always go back configuration where if you want to set up D-Star also or Fusion 
like I said, I only have DMR at this point. It has the admin page, which I'll get to in a second. Um, just showing, this is where it shows your DB Mega version. Talk group, time slot 2, shows which DMR master I'm using. And all that's set up in the configuration page. So this is the admin screen. Um, shows a little bit more detail about what's going on. Um, this, this is a little bit buggy. Um, and it's just because I'm running that older Raspberry Pi. It would probably run a lot better if I was running a Raspberry Pi 2 or 3. Um, but as you can see, temperature, that's why I got it sitting up on the side. Because if I leave it sitting flat, it tends to run a little hot. You can reboot shut down from this screen. It's awesome remote access, but just inside of a web browser. Like I said, so you don't have to remote access all the time. Um, you can even update the Raspberry Pi firmware um, straight from the program so you don't have to go in and uh, run setup, run updates. Although, you know, you don't get to type get update install, all that kind of stuff. So, but it runs through slick. It does what I need. Um, probably need to upgrade the Raspberry Pi, which I think they're running. They're still running like $35 even for the newest versions. And probably get a little bit more airflow on it so it doesn't run so hot. But um, if you have any comments, questions, snide remarks, leave them down below. I'll throw links up for PyStar, where to download it, um, the wiki on, in case you have any questions about it. I'll leave it in the description. But thanks for watching, and I'll throw some more video up, videos up later on. Thanks.